we're talking Summer Dior. I have the new Quint. This is 533 Rivage. R-I-V-A-G-E. There we go. I want the camera to get the true shades in this. It actually is a really pretty Quint. When I first saw this online, I thought, hmm, I'm not so sure. But actually, I've grown to like it the more that I've had it. So we're gonna try it out on the eye today. I'll talk about the other quint that's coming that has that bluish green, a grayish shade in it. And we're gonna talk very briefly about the blush that came out with the sort of spring collection. This is 468 and how it may or may not differ from the existing 468 blush. Hey everybody, so let's go ahead and take a look at the two blushes first and then we'll, dip, we'll go right into the new Quint. So the existing shade 468 looks like this. This was in the um, Birds of Paradise or something uh, collection, uh, I think 2021. Um, and then this is the new 468 and they're the exact same number and they do look very similar. So I don't know if they're going to be the exact same. I'm going to put them on my hand right now for you so you can take a look. The 468, the, the birds of a feather or whatever it was, is a really pretty blush and I really like it. Um, I don't use it that often. But I do, I do like the shade, and yes, there is a little bit of a difference. So here's the new one, and here's the old one. That is fascinating. The new one has less shimmer. There's no glitter in it. The old one had like a little bit of glitter, and it's lighter. It's not as deep. It's not as rosy. How interesting is that? It's cooler toned, it's not as warm. All right, so let's just put a little bit on the cheeks. I already have a little bit of blush on, but not much. I'll put the new one on, that's so interesting. So if you like the 468 before, um, or you own it, this one is a tad different. I see a little bit of sparkle in the pan, but it doesn't show up on the on the hand. Huh. Yeah, it's definitely you can see it's it's more matte. Old one, new one. Same number. So if you're looking and you were thinking about buying it, it's on the Dior website. It is a tad different. Not much, but there is a slight difference between the two, even though it's the same number. Honestly, only Dior would even try to do that. All right, so let's swatch these four shades. I also want to show you up close. There is the design on the embossing on the Quint, which of course is going to get ruined very, very quickly. Um, but it is pretty and it's kind of like a lifeboat, I think. You know, like the floaty things. All right, so let's swatch this on my arm so you can see it. Ruining the embossing very, very quickly. The other Quint, the one that has like a grayish shade in it, I am gonna try to get that early as well. Um, I don't have a guarantee on that, but I will do my best to get it. If I do get it early, it will be up on Patreon first and then over on YouTube, just like this one. And again, to all my Patreon supporters, thank you so much for supporting me over there. Not only can I put up new releases there before they come out so that I don't get my channel taken down. But uh, it does all go back into the cost of buying all of this makeup so that I can review it for you. All right, so that is the Quint. Definitely warm leaning. The cooler shades I would say are these two. This white shade, this cream shade. It does have like a creamy, it does look like a whiter, uh, a creamier white, so like a cooler white. And this is a cooler, 
Moki E. Brown. This is a gold, this is an orange, like almost apricot. And then this shade at the end, I think it's kind of neutral. It could go either way. If you paired this, this, and this together, you'd get a cooler look. But I think the minute you put these in, it's going to warm up. Let's start with the with the shade in the middle, which was what I said is like a, it's a satiny shade. I think it's pretty neutral, definitely satiny. And I'm using a, a Rose and Ben brush. This is the E29 brush, which is a really good, like broad, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't remember what the name of the type of brush is. It'll come to me later. But anyway, as you can see, like you can use it as a very broad brush to get like a whole wide area. And if you put this on your side, if you're someone who likes to pat your makeup in, you can do that on the side of this. That works really well too. For those of you who are watching this on Patreon, I will uh, be getting my hair cut soon, which is very exciting to me because my hair grows so fast and I got it cut like not that long ago or what seems not that long ago. It was six months, but uh, the like the, all the six inches that I cut off are back. So that's the shade. It is very light. I'd say on my skin tone, it it is more neutral. My skin is a little cooler leaning. Um, it kind of goes almost like a tan, but it leans a little warmer, but it's, I mean, it's a relatively neutral shade, but it is satiny. All right, let's take the cream shade, put that in the brow area here. Yeah, that's a really good cream shade. It definitely has some um, satin to it. So if you're someone who doesn't like uh, satin, you know, in your brow bone area, stay away from it because it is, has some satin to it. It's not a matte, but it's a very pretty shade. You can definitely use that to lighten up any look that you, that you would have. All right, so let's take the, um, orangey shade and put that on the lid. I think that will be a nice lid shade for me. If you want to stay away from the warmer shades, like I said, you can make this, I think you could make this cooler by, you know, using the three shades that I mentioned. The orange and the gold in here will be a little warmer. That goes very, the, this is the most, I'll show it to you again. This is the most orange shade. It goes almost sheer on the eye. So I'm gonna take a Kalinsky brush and just see if that picks up more pigment or if this is just, which is fine if it's a sheer shade, but usually, yeah, it does. It picks up a little bit more pigment, but the orange is not, it's not particularly pigmented. It's actually pretty light on the eye. And it is more of like an apricot. Yeah, it's a very, I'd say apricot. It's a very light, almost sheer. And honestly, it blended with that shade that I had in the contour. It doesn't like, you don't see a lot of demarcation between those two shades now, now that I've put that orange on over it. So that's interesting. They kind of blended. All right, let's take the gold shade. Um, let's first put it on the inner corner and see what that does. It doesn't look as gold in the pan. It looks more like it might be a little bit more like orangey yellow, but when you put it on my skin anyway, it looks yellow. Like it looks golden yellow, not the Chanel yellow, golden yellow. But it is very shiny. And in fact, I think putting it on the lid, let's try that. Let's just put it right, right in the middle of the... Yeah, you get a little bit of shine, but there's not a lot. This is a very, very subtle, very lightly pigmented. Like it almost is sheer. You can almost see, I don't have, um, I don't have eye base on. I don't have any primer on because when I first use a palette, I like not to have primer. I want to see how it works, but that's really interesting because it kind of dissipated. Like it just sort of blended away. It's very, very sheer pigment. 
All right, now I'm going to take the deepest shade that's in here. This is the one that I said was a little more cool-leaning. I'm going in with the Sonia G. This is a classic crease, crease brush is what I was looking for in the beginning. The Rose and Ben is a very wide crease brush. Let's see if we can deepen this a little. Yeah, you can deepen it. This, this shade is a little deeper, but not a lot. Interesting. This looks like it might, and I don't know, but this might be part of like the Cruise collection. I have the Pret-a-Porter, which is already up here on, on Patreon, but I'll have it over on uh, YouTube when it when it's out again for this year. But this may be part of the Cruise collection because it's got the, the um, Lifesaver thing. See how light that is? I mean, it's, it's actually very pretty, but the pigment, especially in the orange shade, kind of disappears. I think if you use your finger, you'll probably get the best. Yeah, you get the best with the with the with your finger. But I don't know. I like the formula feels different. It feels more powdery. All right, guys, that's it. Let me put the um, let me take the deepest shade and use that as liner. I'm gonna tell you right now though, I don't really I don't really love this. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like for a light, you know look. I like the Chanel Delis, and that was light. That's a very light palette. But if you remember, or if you saw that, um, the, when you put the gold on it over it, I mean, that gold is, is opaque. It, it's not really gold, it's yellow. That yellow is opaque, and you can like enhance the look with it. This kind of just blended away. Um, like I said, it's not bad. It's not like a bad, it's not a bad looking quint, but I just feel like there's so little difference in the shades and the formula feels different to me than the traditional formula. I don't have the box for this, so I can't tell you if it's the same, but it feels different. Hmm. Yeah, like, can you kind of see how, like, it all looks like just a light swatch of, like, a warmish tan with a little bit of gold? The white stands out. The white ba uh, bone color, that stands out. But the rest of it... Yeah, I don't... Uh, and it's very powdery. This is a very powdery formula. It'll be interesting to see when I get my hands on the ingredients if it's a different formula, because it may be. Uh, Dior does that. Like they don't necessarily tell you that it's a new formula, but it's a different formula. Not a new formula, but a different formula from their traditional. This could be like a different formula. It feels like it. It looks like it. It's not, it's not blending the same and it's not as, even with the Kalinske brush, like it didn't, I don't know. It's not as creamy. It's powdery. Again, if you, if you're somebody who really likes like a warm, very lightly pigmented, almost sheer look, I think you'll like it, but I don't think it looks as nice on the eye, to be honest with you. There's, it's not as creamy. Like usually it has the aloe and the pine oil and stuff in it that makes it creamy. This feels different and you can see the lines on my eyes more with this. Now it could be just because I'm having a bad eye day. That's entirely possible, but I don't know. It feels different. Still says six months on it. All right, let me put some mascara on and we'll just do final thoughts. Back with mascara. I always say that mascara just fixes everything. I actually think it does look very pretty, but I think you can see already that it has blended almost completely into like one shade. Maybe two, because you see the white. The, the very bright gold on the inner corner is still there, but you know, you don't really see a lot of difference between the three shades, uh, well, four shades, really. I mean, it's these three shades, these three that kind of blended into one. The gold shade on the inner corner, yes, it's still there, but I put it on the lid of the eye and it kind of blended away. The cream white shade, yes, you can see that. that that's a nice accent, but I don't know, like these three shades kind of blended and that's interesting because they're they're different shades in the pan and they're different shades in the swatching. I think it's because the pigment and the formula is so sheer that it just sort of blends into one 
unless you're like patting it in or especially if you're not using a primer. If you use a primer, I think it'll stick better and so you'll have more demarcation. Um, but I always like to use it without a primer the first time to see how good the formula is. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really like this one. I have to say like for what you're getting for your money. Do I think it's a pretty look overall? Yes, but I could just take an apricot shade, put it all over my eye and, and you know, do a little bit of like bone shade in the, in the, in the brow area and I'd be done um, from, you know, any other palette. Um, this one's a lot more expensive. And yeah, I don't, the formula is different. I don't know what's different about this one, but it's not the, the Dior formula where you have like the, the creaminess, the oils that kind of make your, your eyes feel like comfortable. This isn't here. This feels more, this feels more powdery to me. So yeah, it's not my favorite. Um, is it, is it a pretty kind of peachy apricot look? Yes. Uh, but I think for what you're paying for it, I think this, this kind of all blended away into, to like maybe two, three shades at the most. Uh, the formula feels a little different. Like I said, once I have the list of ingredients, I'll be able to confirm, but it doesn't feel the same. Not bad, but just not, you know, not up to quality, just okay at the best. The blush, um, as I showed you in the swatches, it is slightly different, uh, this new 468. Enough to buy it? I would say no, I don't think it's gonna be that drastically different, but it is a very pretty shade, and if you don't have the one from the Birds of a Feather or whatever the heck it was called, then yeah, I think it's a really nice rosy, it has a little bit of, uh, it's like a, it's almost like a rosewood, but it's got, it's not as deep as that. And it, it is a very pretty shade. And I think actually Dior blushes are beautiful formulas. It does look like there's a little bit of glitter in the pan, but when I put it on my arm, my hand and my face, I don't see it. So I don't know if there's just a little bit of spray in there. It just doesn't come out or what, but um, I don't see it on the face. So that's it for now, guys. I'll uh, do a review of the other summer Dior as soon as I have the rest of the collection. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. Hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye.